All right, let's see here. All right, let's see here. Facebook online, Twitch is sending the data. <clears throat> cool. All right, we in here. Yeah, it looks like Twitch is live. All right, cool, whatever. Let's get started. All right, <clears throat> looks like everything is good. But for some reason, it keeps saying sending data to Twitch. So I don't know what that means, but I'm not gonna question it. So. <clears throat> All right, cool. Let's get it going. I right, we are in here. We're chilling. Oh shit, I forgot. We gotta fix that. And it's a little hot in here. I'm gonna turn the AC on a little bit. Give me a second. Let's get this AC going. So at least get that to a 70. <clears throat> All right, we in here. So I probably gotta make this bigger. Because I need to figure out the perspective early. So let's do that. Cool. What's up, everybody? What's going on? Um, if you have work that you want me to take a look at, um, I'm going to put something in the chat right now, actually. Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to make a file a request on Dropbox. And you guys can send work if you want me to take a look at it then. So <clears throat> let me go to my Dropbox. Let me sign in on my other screen right here. And then I should be able to create a, a file request if people are about that. So just let me do that real quick. Home, files, uh, where is it? File requests, there we go. And feedback. So how do I do this again? I forget how I do it. Um, request files, there we go. Uh, give request a name, feedback, we're good, set deadline. <clears throat> feedback, okay. So we'll hit next and copy, sweet. So, um, if you want to send some stuff, um, <clears throat> then you could put it in there. Uh, environment based only though, so that's the only thing, yeah? So, just keep that in mind. Yo, what's up, Tyler? How's it going, bro? Uh, yeah, so that's the only, that's the only requirement, yeah? <clears throat> it's gotta be environment based. All right, anyways, let's get started. Um, let me just do it this way. <clears throat> All right. So let's do it this way. So I'm just trying to kind of uh, lay out the, the vanishing points and stuff. A little bit easier. <clears throat> So it is less work to do in the long run. So, <clears throat> yes, Twitch can be used for art. Uh, there's a lot of probably like better artists like than me for sure on this platform. So <clears throat> if you haven't checked them out, then you totally should because uh, there's a lot of badass people and more and more it's becoming a really good outlet for people. So definitely uh, check it out. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, sorry, I have to do the more tedious part right now, which is uh, make a vanishing point and stuff like that. So I apologize. But uh, it makes my life a little bit easier in the long run if I do it now. So that's what I'm going to be doing. So. Da, 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 da. You know what? I do have a, uh, <clears throat> I have a brush for this. So I might just do that out of pure just to get the game going here. So if I was my, there we go. 
That's what I'm looking for. So let's just line that up. There we go, cool. Uh, and then we'll <clears throat> probably drag it over there a little bit more. Cool. So yeah, that's not too bad. <clears throat> yeah, right? And then we'll duplicate it and then we'll flip it. And then we'll have that one kind of line up. I'm probably gonna move this vanishing point by the way, so it's all good. <clears throat> and then we'll make that one blue. So there we go. And then this guy will make this one just black, I guess, because of the fact that this needs to be bigger. So that will line up there. <clears throat> and then, cool. Not too bad. We'll roll that over and then there we go. So where's that blue guy? Yes. So right about there. And then we'll link that up. Cool. And then we will definitely take this guy over here and <clears throat> oops there we go all right so now that we finally got everything where i want um we'll just kind of uh begin to crop that so the crop will be <clears throat> something like that i imagine i don't know something around there and then what we'll do is we'll inverse that <clears throat> And then that will be the overall space that we're going to use. And then we'll probably just crop to that and then call it a day. So we should be, <clears throat> should be good to go to begin. So we kind of zoom in there and we check that out and <clears throat> looks good to me. We'll turn that off. We don't need that. And then something got weird here. I don't know what's going on there. Huh. Oh, it's because I oh, I did that wrong. Shoot, okay. I stretched it out too much and I now have to fix that, okay. So you know what, I'll just do it the regular way. And then just do it that way. <clears throat> I kind of stretched it too too uh, too far, and stretch that one back, and then we're good to go. Cool. Now uh, we'll turn that off, make a new layer, group that. Good. We'll lower the opacity. We'll make this like some kind of grayish bluish color or something. <clears throat> I'm not sure what color I want to make it yet. And then we will make our picture plane. And then we'll inverse selection. There we go. Boom. Right. <clears throat> um, okay. So what are you doing tonight? So you said instead of do environment, put it where? Uh, whoops. Okay. We'll lower so the opacity. Let me uh, post that on my Facebook as well. Right there. So if you want to drop something in there, you can drop it right there. And then um, I'll take a look um, later. <clears throat> Hey, what's up, man? Yeah, it's been a, it's been a minute, dude, for sure. So I'm just trying to kind of figure out where I want to put stuff for right now. I'm not too like set on it, but because this this uh, this file size is like huge right now. Uh, if I look at it, let me see. And the file size is six thousand. Actually, it's not that huge. I can work with this. So um, this will make it a little bit easier to kind of um, <clears throat> figure out like how I want to paint something. So that's the goal here. Um, let's put this a little bit above right there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new window. Uh, window, workspace, arrange, new window. So we have two of these windows. But that second window, I'm going to make it a lot smaller. And I'm going to make it black and white. <clears throat> so this is kind of like... A little trick you can do, <clears throat> right? If you're, there we go. 
So if you're unsure about something, right, about like how you want to paint it or if the values are working, um, you can make a separate window. This is kind of common knowledge for most people, but in case you didn't know, like y'all could do it this way. So this is kind of how I do it a lot of times if I'm like unsure about some shit. So hold up. There you go. So now um, I can kind of, oops, there you go. Sorry, my window arrangement skills are trash right now, and I apologize. <clears throat> there we go. All right, cool. So now what happens is, let me just move this down, move this up. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay, so the cool thing about it is that I can technically paint in a super high um, <clears throat> saturated color. So if I paint in a, let's say a bright red color like that, it actually shows up as black and white. So I can see how it's going to be affecting me like as I'm painting. So um, that's actually a very nice thing that you can do <clears throat> that makes my life um, a little bit easier as I'm, as I'm working through some stuff, yeah? So you can kind of see why that's valuable. Uh, so technically you can paint black and white um, but you're actually painting in color. So you can actually turn that in, it's black and white, and then when you're ready to go to color, right, then you're just, it's all Gucci, you know what I mean? Like, you could, it's a lot easier to do. So, <clears throat> anyways, uh, we will get rid of that. And for now, I think we can just kind of go with like a little bit of a random, this can kind of be like sort of like the marker drawing here a little bit, where we're just kind of just messing around, just seeing where we can go with something. And then from there, I can possibly build it out um, with some lines, just kind of like some basic forms and stuff. And then, you know, uh, use it as kind of a guide. So this one, like, I don't really care what's going on here. Like, I kind of just want to just put something down on paper <clears throat> and just to see like where it happens. <clears throat> So I might zoom out a little bit here. And, you know, I could possibly kind of mess with colors here. Like, I'm not sure if I really need to. And see, already I can see, like, how that looks. And so that's kind of, like, um, <clears throat> kind of useful in a way that I can kind of see, like, the environment as a whole. And then it, it gives me a little bit more time to kind of really think about some things. So this is kind of just, like, super rough. I'm gonna, probably going to get rid of it. Like, I'm not going <clears> to <throat> really ever use it. But... I can now have this as kind of like my rough marker drawing. So this is kind of the equivalent to kind of using like a Copic marker for those that know what those are. Those kind of art markers. This is like my art marker drawing where I'm just kind of, I'm um, just messing around here. <clears throat> so kind of cool, right? So uh, Boba, Milk Bee, sorry, I missed high step the thumbnail window value. Yeah, it's all good. I'll show you, I'll show it to you right now. So all you have to do is when you have your original file up, just go to a uh, window and go to arrange and then go to new window for um it's the bottom one so i didn't name this so i'll actually name i'll actually save this out right now and i'll save it to my uh <clears throat> let's see i have my dropbox so i'll save it to my twitch and i'll call it um stream <clears throat> let's go 813 so stream 813. So when you do it, um, this is Photoshop, by the way. So this is just the regular cloud version of Photoshop. So all I'm doing right there is I'm going to arrange uh, a window, arrange, and then go all the way down. So it says new window for stream uh, 813, which is what I just called it. And so then if I want to, I can make another one. If I, You can make as many as you want, I think. I don't know if there's a limit, but <clears throat> it's definitely... I've never actually seen how many I can do. I don't want to like overwhelm my program, but now I can technically have one that is like color and one that's not color, if that makes sense. So <clears throat> that can be a value too, because now if you guys watch this real quickly, um, I can then make a shape right now. So if I go back to here and I make a big giant shape, <clears throat> well, guess what? It shows up there as a value and then it shows up there like as color 
And so then, and the cool part too, is that I can actually go here and paint here if I want to. So if I want to kind of do it as a kind of a bigger thing, right? If I want to maybe treat it as a thumbnail, you can actually do that and it actually does it right there too. So you can go back and forth. So that's actually like super helpful uh, when you're doing stuff. But I only really knew, I don't really use it for like, like black and white though. You know what I mean? Like, cause I just want to see it as like a value sketch. Like, does it look good? Like, is it cool? Like all that kind of shit. So <clears throat> that's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm trying to do. So I'm not, I don't have any layers going on, any of that kind of nonsense. Like it's just strictly like painting, you know, like just being kind of loose with it, being kind of rough with it. Um, right now this is kind of like at like 18%. Um, and not too bad. Uh, I feel like I need to raise the picture plane up a little bit. So I want the picture plane to be a little bit higher and I want this to be a little bit higher as well. So that way um, <clears throat> um, it can be a little bit more dynamic, yeah? So that's what I'm trying to go with right now, we'll see. So if I zoom out now and I turn this off, right? That's the space. And this is always good because now if I wanna extend it, if I wanna paint more out of it, I now have those like guidelines to kind of do that. You know what I mean? So it makes it like a little bit more uh, realistic. Like I can actually really work on getting the proper perspective because I can actually draw uh, beyond everything. And then when I'm done, then I'll just crop it. You know what I mean? So it's always good to give yourself like more space than what you need. And then also have like a very zoomed out like version of it. <clears throat> and then, you know, gives you more to work with. So. Um, that's why a good file size and stuff like that is like really helpful here. <clears throat> okay, cool. Um, sorry, I'm just reading what's going on here. Um, uh, yeah, so proof setup is the same thing. So what I did there is uh, I made it black and white. Ah, shit. Uh, I made it black and white and I did proof setup, right? So proof setup, um, you know, you go there, you do custom. And then mine's obviously what everyone knows is the working <clears throat> working gray dot 20. And then you do that. So then the hotkey for that is this control Y. So if I want to bring this back, you know, I can just do that control Y. And you'll you'll see it change right there. It says working gain dot 20%. So my control Y, which again is the uh, view, the proof colors, control Y, is a custom, and that custom is right here, working gain dot 20%. I don't know where it's at on here, but I think it's, I think it's like the second one. So yeah, it's right there. <clears throat> and I said, okay. I have no idea what all this shit means. Like I've like tried to look it up, but I don't even, at that point, I don't even care. I'm just trying to paint. I'm just trying to hoop. So yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So this is like, all right. And it's good enough. I can now begin to maybe like layer this up a little bit. So like normally when I'm thinking about stuff, like, I try to think of it in like kind of compound shapes. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of make a ground plane for now because that's important. So we'll make this like a bluish color. The colors don't really matter at this point because if they're on a separate layer, then I can kind of fill it, you know what I mean? So at that point, it could literally be anything. So I'm not even tripping. Um, so, you know, what I'll do is I'll make a bunch of just like random shapes like that. And sometimes I like to do it this way in terms of like, uh, actually, I don't know if I, colors don't matter, but I at least try to act like I care about it. There you go. So what I try to do is I try to make a bunch of different shapes and I'll make a bunch of different layers with for them. And the reason why this can be kind of helpful is um, you can move stuff around, you know what I mean? So, oops, I'll take that back. Uh, what is my wife texting me right now? Woman in 15, uh-oh, she's sending me a Karen video. That's hilarious, sorry. My wife is like texting me and she's upstairs. Okay, so the reason why this is cool is because you can actually move stuff around and it actually makes it a little bit easier to kind of see, to kind of make unique compound shapes and so then once you're done, then you can just kind of render it out. You know what I mean? So um, I'll make another shape right here and maybe this shape will be kind of like <clears throat> there. 
And the cool part is like, so like normally like, let's say I like this shape right here and I'm moving it, right? That's a pretty nice shape and I can work with that. But normally if I wanted to paint that shape, it would be kind of hard because in order to get all the different angles, right? That would need to kind of make that. <clears throat> You can already see like it's not nearly as sexy a little bit. It's like kind of it's to get the angles right, right? To paint that in would take a lot more time. And at any point in time, if I want to, you know, edit the shape, I have to kind of go in there and edit, you know what I mean? I have to kind of go in there and, and erase and stuff like that versus doing it this way. I can actually just move the shape over and over again. And what makes it kind of interesting is that if you put shapes in between it that are of different value, um, you can actually create some really interesting ideas. So let's say that <clears throat> I want to make a shape that's like a, a pathway or, or some of some sort, right? So let's say I'm doing that. So if you look at that, I now just kind of create a pathway like right there. And that's kind of cool in my head at least. So now I can go in here and maybe I'll take this guy and I'll make a new layer. And what I'll do is um, you know, I'll do something like that. And boom. So all of a sudden I just made a pathway right there and I didn't have to like work for it. You know what I mean? Like I cut it out and no matter where I move it, I can now find some of these angles. Whereas if I was doing it here and I wanted to kind of create those angles here, right? That overlap right there that's happening, um, that would take a little bit of time to kind of like get that angle to where I want it. Now I could totally do it by the way. It's not necessarily hard to get that angle in there, but to create some of that overlap and stuff like that that you want to get for the little piece, um, it's easier if you just kind of just paint it as separate so what's happening here is that it's like actually like multiple shapes going on. So you can see it, so you can actually kind of see it right now that in my head, whoops, in my head, there's like a shape right there, right? There's like a shape right there. So all I'm doing is I'm kind of separating it and kind of creating compound shapes, what I call it in my head. So if I do that here, which is already kind of happening, um, I don't have to worry about it, right? I have a little bit more control, at least in this kind of beginning phase that I can kind of mess around with stuff and I can kind of erase where I need it, right? So I can kind of move, scale, rotate. I can make something a little bit smaller um, and I can kind of just mess around with the shape until I get it to where I want it to be. So <clears throat> I can duplicate it. Maybe I'll duplicate this guy and I'll flip it I'll rotate it, I'll make it a little bit smaller, kind of do something like that. You know, now we're kind of designing a little bit more here. <clears throat> and we can kind of mess with that. And then eventually, like if I'm feeling confident in it, then I can, you know, add to it a little bit. But that's kind of where, whoops, kind of where I'm at right now. And so this one probably has to go a little bit further back though. So this one that's important right now, right here, I'll make it blue so I know where it's at. Like a blue layer so I can see where I'm moving it. But that ground plane now, you can already see like how much easier it is to kind of like move stuff around. That would have been harder to do like earlier. So I'm actually gonna make this smaller. And I'll probably, you know, do that. So I only do this in the very, very beginning just because I feel like it's a little bit easier to kind of work with shapes. And uh, let me delete this crap now because I've made my point there. And I'll just kind of get some of the bigger shapes as well. So um, I'll, kind of, <clears throat> I'll kind of group it as is. So that would be one group, which would be kind of foreground. So I would call this like the mid ground, I guess, actually. So that would be mid ground. And then I'll make a new layer in front of it. And this new layer would be like the, uh, I guess kind of the foreground here. And so at this point, like I'm just gonna just make a big giant shape and just kind of just roll with it. You know what I mean? So like, boom. So already we're covering a lot of ground. <clears throat> we can see what's going on. 
I can see the perspective going on here. At this point, I just want the big shape. I'm still kind of constantly looking at it right here and I'm just kind of messing around here. And then eventually what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of like delete it. I'll delete the, um, the kind of rough drawing right here. So this is the rough drawing. So I'll actually name this. So rough and we'll name this ground. So naming this stuff is kind of important too in color coding when you can. It's not, not like the end of the world, but you want to have some kind of like, you want to have some kind of organization with your shit, especially like if you're like me where like you don't finish shit like right away. Um, I'm one of those people. So like I'll start something and then season five Apex comes out and then I want to do that instead. Uh, so uh, you got to have to have some kind of organization or leave some notes for yourself. So that way, like you don't uh, you don't forget what the hell's going on, because that happens to me a lot. Like I kind of I'm kind of forgetful in that way. So cool. And then we'll we'll leave that for now. And then I want to make something in the background, which I'm not sure what it is. So I have uh, no, what the? Oh, okay, sorry, I was about to yell, about to raise my voice for no reason. Cool. All right. So now I kind of look at it right here, and I'm like, uh. You know, like, is that the right way? Is, you know, am I doing that right? Uh, I'll probably need a couple of layers in front of it. So I'm kind of, I'm like really hardcore, like squinting my eyes off right now, like, Ugh. because I want that to, like, you can barely see that probably, you probably can't see it on your screen. Um, Cause I imagine my screen's probably hella small on your computer. But on my screen, I can barely see it. So, I mean, that's good because I want it to be very, uh, like, small, very, very small <coughs> uh, incremental changes in the value. But actually, I need to go a little bit darker. I take that back. Uh, I don't know. Uh, see. I can't tell. It's it's actually not. It's actually not dark enough. It's like okay, there we go. It's actually better. Okay. All right, cool. So y'all can see how that works. Uh, Tyler asks, uh, "Do you save your streams at all?" Um, yeah. So they only save for like a week, and I don't know. All right, so I'm a little bit new to, to the, like all the new Twitch stuff. So I don't know how to save more than a week on Twitch, to be honest. I think I have to have a certain amount of followers in order to get that, to get that uh, that privilege where I can save more. But otherwise, I don't think they save um, past like 21 days. I'll have to look into that. But normally, I only have like three people in here anyway, so that probably doesn't help my my f the fact so uh i'm sure if i had more people in on, on a more consistent basis which is my fault for not streaming enough anyway um then i'm sure that i could probably find a way to like get more stuff in there so apply this means uh rayan what's going on rayan what's, what's good bro uh so yeah so that's what i'm trying to do right now is figure that out uh, mind linking your Twitch real quick? Uh, yeah, you can link it. Um, wait, do you want me to link it or do you are you gonna link it? I'm not sure what you mean there. If you're gonna link it, then by all means. Um, but I can. I mean, all you have to do is click on. I think if you just type in my name, Kalen Art, like my name, Kalen Art Twitch, that's what I'm twi that's what I'm streaming on. So, <clears throat> uh, yeah, nothing too complicated there. And plus, uh, it sucks because I'm on three platforms simultaneously. So I'm on a YouTube and I'm on Twitch and I'm on Facebook Live. So um, that kind of gets spread out a little bit. So there's that problem too. So um, 
Yeah, so you should just be able to type in Kalen Art. So my first name, Art, at twitch.com. Let me know if you don't find it. I think if you just type twitch.com slash Kalen Art, that's how I always find myself. Um, that will make it uh, pretty easy to find me. Okay, so that's not bad. I like where that's going. Uh, this will be the uh, background. Nice. <clears throat> Let's go. Gandalf the goat. What's good? Alright. Uh, and then I'll make some layers in here. And then these layers are going to be some cloudies. Some little cloudies. Cloudies McCloudersons. Uh... I'll make I'll make the clouds yellow. Uh, Ray and B, yeah, dude, you can ask whatever you want. That's the whole point of this. Like, if you're not asking questions, then like, there's no point in me doing these kind of things. Like, because there are other better people that you can watch that will probably do better work and show off better. Um, me, com me, kind of coming from an educational background. Uh, this is strictly for educational purposes. So, um, if you have questions, like that would be the time to do it. And if you check back in the stream or scroll up a little bit later, uh, I do have a link there. And that link is where people can submit artwork and take a look at it and I'll do a paint over for you. Um, I don't do it all the time, um, but just sometimes. So uh, if you're into that, then you can submit work, but obviously only environment based and whatnot. So sorry, these are my ideas of clouds right now. They're pretty angular, but that's because <clears throat> I can do stuff with it later. And the cool part about it is uh, if I make more clouds, let's say I wanna make some clouds like right here, uh, it's a lot easier to do because I have all the layering, see all that? So I can move that later and then when I wanna detail it, you know, uh, right? Life is a lot easier to kinda handle that, so. What's going on? It's Tyler. Oh, okay. Gandalf is Tyler. <laughs> That's hilarious. Good name. Good, uh, good Twitch name. Yo. That's kind of cool. And then <clears throat> I'm wondering with the clouds in the back back, in the back of the back, if we can get something kind of cool. You know what I mean? Like, Something like big. Feel me? Like something like that. That's gonna be like cool. So, like that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking of. All right. So a couple things we can do. I think the rough has played its part. And we're good to go. This might not be needed in a little bit. And let's just kind of, um, that's the ground plan. This is the background. Uh, let's get the mid ground going and we'll, <clears throat> and we'll call it a day. You know what I mean? So we can start to kind of really block this out. So it's not too bad, you know? It's like not a bad block out. Not amazing by any means, but um, I'm definitely gonna get the job done. And the cool part about this now too is that I feel like I have more leeway to kind of move stuff, you know what I mean? Like I can move this over now if I want to, because I think I need to. And I can move this stuff. So it becomes a lot more about composing too, a little bit, um, in terms of like how I, how I want to actually make the shapes. So this is kind of why it's like important to kind of start off this way, I think, just because you can now control a lot more like this is kind of where i live even though like this is really really big like i live right here you know what i mean like this is the shit to me like if i can make this shit look tight from here then i'm feeling pretty confident that like i can if i render it it's gonna look cool like i already kind of have some kind of like zigzagging patterns i already have some cool stuff going on there so i just know that in my head like i just gotta make that work so that's that piece right there. <clears throat> and, and we'll just kind of put that in there, you know? 
So actually, what I'll do here is I'll make a new layer and I'll fill that. Why? Because then I can just, I can make these little shapes right here a little bit easier. And that's important to me to kind of get that, uh, that motion in there. <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, Ray and B is asking, I'm an architecture graduate. That's dope. Uh, not that good with drawing, but I can handle myself and I wanted, and I want to dig in the environment concept art. And I saw your class on CG, uh, CGMA, Fundamentals and Environment class, aside with Fundamentals of Architecture. Do you think it's a good idea? I think it's a good start for a beginner like me or you take some classes first. Uh, I'd recommend, uh, I recommend the, um, uh, dynamic dynamic sketching class actually is really good. Um, that's why a guy named Patrick Belisteros. Um, we'll just do a quick side plug here. Um, no, I don't get paid for plugging this stuff, uh, but maybe I should. <laughs> uh, Patrick Belisteros is the shit. He's actually my very first concept concept art teacher um, I ever had. And anyone, anyone that's ever had him, like Anthony Jones, Nino Aguilar, some like some some badass guys will tell you, um, this guy's the shit. Anyways, uh, his class, you learn a lot of this like visual, like Viscom, and Viscom is like a kind of a lost art. The guy that kind of created, it, I think, passed away a few years ago. I think the only person that really teaches it is like Peter Hahn. Peter Hahn's also a good per person to learn this stuff from. Um, but uh, you learn a lot about visual communication for for concept art, and this stuff really translates really really well if you're not into the whole digital painting stuff. It's all traditional, but this stuff really like translates well to digital because when you begin to kind of design things for like games, film, whatever, um, you, you need to know a lot of this kind of way of thinking and it's like pretty pretty important. And I think he has another one too. So if you had to take a class, um, that's the one that I would, I'd recommend personally. So hope that, uh, hope that helps. <clears throat> uh your your art journey okay now let's see here we have this guy okay mid ground uh this one will be in its own layer too and we'll call it foreground and we'll save we gotta save every once in a while god forbid and there we go boom and so everyone that's new here, uh, thanks for coming by. I appreciate it. Tell your friends, I guess, if you want to. If not, it's all good. Uh, and yeah. Cool. Nice. Whoops, not that nice. So by the way, I have no idea if I even want to make it this color or not. I'm just doing it just because of the fact that that's easy to kind of see. <clears throat> so... That's not too bad, like, in terms of what we were looking for here. Uh, this guy, we'll turn this off in the meantime, and then we'll put this in here like that, all right? So you can already kind of see how, by like moving this stuff, we're creating these little shapes right here. So these are the, these are the shapes that are like really hard to kind of do manually, are things like this, where, if I had to zoom in here, to create a shape that's like this is really, really hard, right? To create that shape and constantly kind of design, right? That negative space, that is hard to do um, in general, right? But it's a very, very clean, solid shape. But notice how it's a little bit easier to kind of move stuff around to kind of figure out where I want to put it. You know what I mean? Like you can see now, if I now want to kind of move that, I now have the option to kind of mess with it and also create something that's visually interesting. So um, that is really helpful and that's exactly why I do it. So um, I, know I kind of liked where it was before, but to be honest, I have a feeling it's going to change. So <clears throat> I'm not going to get too much into it. So uh, this guy right here, I feel like is gonna be, you know, and I'll probably make a I'll probably make a tutorial about this way of thinking at some point in time. I just don't know when, to be honest. Uh, 
Sorry, I'm kind of like in this mode right now where I'm not sure what the next step is, and this is where I have to either look at it on the gray, on the gray on my gray screen over here, or just kind of begin to paint with instincts. And I'd rather not use the whole kind of instinct way of painting quite yet if I don't have to. So. This is much more methodical, a little bit more thought out, like a little bit more scientific. And so I got to figure out like, how do I want to approach that? Um, sorry, I got to check, make sure there's not any other questions. Okay, the file request is good. I lost my thing. Okay, we're good. So uh, now once I get to this point here, uh, I got to figure out um, if I want to move the, the scope up, so I turn this off, right? That's what that's what that is. Um, I'm thinking maybe the crop I want to be a little bit higher. You see there, so that could be kind of nice to kind of crop it. So like all these things are like are in play right now, and I gotta make sure that they are cool. And so this is a much more kind of methodical way of designing. Uh, I like kind of doing it this way because then I feel like anyone can do this because it's not about um, it's not about like what crazy brushes or what crazy stuff you have. It's mostly just about um, you know can you compose something that's visually interesting? You know what I mean? So that's why I kind of like doing it this way. But once I get to a point where I'm comfortable, then I'll probably switch it up to this brush and then this brush is nice because it's a lot easier to kind of go in here and add in some values and stuff like that so if i'm unsure about something i'll just make it a little bit darker so i can see it and look at that so it makes it a little bit easier to understand that this needs to be in front of it there we go so cool There you go. So now I can kind of go in here if I want to, and I can begin to kind of like paint something out. So you can see how now like we're kind of rounding out some of these things here, and we're just kind of like hanging out a little bit more. And I have no idea if I want to do the colors or not. Like the colors can change really easily. I'm just kind of making, I'm just kind of looking right here kind of see like if I like it or not. So that's it. Like, But now, now is kind of the time where I can kind of at least now begin to kind of have fun in terms of like painting in like all kinds of regularities, that kind of stuff. So now you can see like this stuff uh, kind of work out here. Uh, Water Shallow it says, is this shot a wide focal length? Uh, this one, I think, if, I'm trying to remember what I did with the perspective. Uh, I believe it's kind of like a, not a wide one. It's actually just a human eye. So I think it's probably like a 60 millimeter, I would imagine, in terms of the, like, um, the focal length of the camera. I think it's like probably like a 60 millimeter. Like, the average, the human eye is 60, I believe. I'm trying to think. It's hard to think right now because I'm painting. Um, but I did I did one kind of far and one close. One vanishing point was far and one was close. So um, to check that, uh, we could do it this way. I'll just turn everything off like so. Boom, turn, all, turn everything off. Uh, that was my perspective. So if I made that like 100%, uh, my, oh, I lost my station point. So yeah, so this is this one's really close. This one's really far. So overall, the it's a pretty average kind of shot. So right there, you can kind of see what it is. So it's a pretty like just regular, like a medium. It's not long. It's not it's not super close. Um, where it's gonna be like a three point kind of fisheye. It's a uh, pretty standard. So uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. There, and let's keep it going. 
I don't know. I really don't know on this one. Uh, cool though. I like it. So it's a good question though. Definitely a good question. Bad, not bad, not bad. Um, I'm just checking on my other screen here, make sure we don't have any other questions, and we're good. Sweet, cool. All right, cool. Um, let's see here. Maybe I want to extend this guy a little bit more. So now I'm thinking I want to make it more. So if I make it more, then I feel like I have more to work with in terms of the space, and I kind of like that. So uh, we'll see. Boom. Hmm. All right, so we'll get rid of this guy here. Boom. And so this is the this is like why layering is super important because now uh, I can make like drastic changes here, and I am trying to like make this work a little bit better. So you know what I wanna do here? I actually wanna do the same thing I did right there. So let me delete this. I'm gonna make a new layer in front of it or behind it. And I'm gonna make this like a lighter color, just a tad bit lighter like that. So that's what I wanna do, right? So now we kind of get that motion. And then on top of it, but yet behind it, I want there to be like a little bit of a change in value like that. All right, you see that? So now I can kind of get that shape and I don't have to really worry about stuff. So that can be kind of nice. And what I then want to do is I want to make this a little bit lighter. And we'll make this guy a little bit lighter. We'll just use Control U. Oops. So I'm just kind of making sure I can kind of see the difference here. And then what we'll do is make a new layer. <clears throat> and then on top of said new layer, we'll kind of. Uh, I don't know. We'll make this darker. And so, yeah, so I think that would be kind of cool. We'll have to see where it goes. And then obviously in my head, I'm like, oh, I want this to kind of, kind of come downward a little bit. So you see that, how that kind of, um, makes that work a little bit stronger see not too bad uh what is the alice tang thing in the music tab on your overlay what is it that you speak of um oh i think that's probably like the last person that subscribed i don't know how to make this work by the way um so i have a Streamlabs thing which uh my friend michael helped me set up so it's like it's all these things that he put in. So things like the alert goal. So I think actually if I turn this off, does that not show up? No. Overlay. Hold on. Sorry. There's like all kinds of things on here that are like, I'm pretty sure it's the alert box. No, I, oh yeah, okay, yeah, so overlay. Huh. All right, well, I tried. 
Oh yeah, so it's all, it's all that stuff. Viewer, the music, music album, current song. Oh yeah, new sub, there it is. So yeah, if I turn that off, that should turn off the new sub issue, if that is there. So there you go. Um, but the music though, we still want that um, current song. So there you go. And then I use a uh, pretzel to uh, play song, play music. So there you go. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, not too bad. Sorry. Uh, move this over. Go back to my other screen, and we'll check this out. So now, if I really want to, like, now's the time where I could actually really like say hey I want to um, make some like drastic changes with the color all that kind of stuff so now it just really depends on like what I want to do mm, yeah. cool but my favorite thing about having the layers is that now if I want to have like clouds in between, that's my shit. So uh, if I want to now, I can have like nice clouds. Whoops. Right there. And I can like paint them in front of it and have all these kind of interesting things I can erase from it. Um, you know, I could do the, 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 the very cheesy motion blur, right? Do a little motion blur action. Oh, snap. Oh, snap clouds. Bam. Right? Now I got clouds. Right? Easy. That's light work. All right. Do this all day. So anyways, um, we're still in that like organization phase right now. And not sure I'm quite there yet, but I'm getting there. Oop, there you go. Let's just make that a little bit taller. Cool. And then now, like, like now I'm in a pretty good place right now. Like, I feel like I could definitely begin to kind of like render it out. But if I'm not happy in this phase right here, like normally I know that like I'm just gonna be happy and unhappy in general no matter how much I render shit out. So I try to get pretty happy like in this phase of my work, right? Like I want this to kind of really like be visually interesting in terms of like this statement right here, right? Does that statement look good? And if it doesn't, then I'm like, all right, but why is that the case? And like, how do we fix that shit? So that's what I'm trying to do right now. So like, I gotta move that up. Maybe do that. Probably move that over. All right, you see, now the game is being played. And so like, if I were to give you guys this like PSD, right, and move it around, like, could you make it like in an interesting way? So that's kind of like the next question that we gotta play with is like, how do we, how do we make that happen? So uh, Watershell is asking, is it more of a preference to use harder brushes instead of texture painterly at this stage? Oh yeah, I never use like textured brushes because it gets in the way. Like texture to me is like the last thing you want to be doing um, in terms of the order because it, cause, like if the textures, like if the, you can have, if your values and like your color and your lighting is off, texture won't solve shit. Like it's not going to do anything for you. So like the hierarchy that I do when I try to do things is this in terms of like the first stage is perspective and composition right those are like perspective composition and you can't have composition without perspective right and so after that phase we're trying to go to simple shapes so we already we're kind of already in that right now the simple shapes is really really kind of we're doing that and figuring it out 
after that, we get into uh, value and color, right? Or we just call it value because value is technically like value slash like refinement. And we didn't really even like count the uh, that rough sketch that we did, but that's kind of like the rough sketching phase, yeah? So we have that, we have the perspective compositions. We're doing simple shapes right now. Then we think about value and refining. The next thing to me is like color and light, which we're kind of solving at the same time because of the fact that we're painting it um, in color next to the value. And then the next part obviously is like pattern and texture. And so whenever you like mess up, chances are you gotta take a step back of where you were. So if your texture sucks, chances are it's because the color and the lighting is off. If your color and your lighting is off, chances are it's because your values are off. If your values are off, chances it's because your your shapes aren't you're, you're you're not sure what shapes you're using, right? And so in the beginning, everything can kind of fit into a box cylinder cone sphere, right? This is kind of like the basics of shapes that we see in everyday life. Draw the ellipse, Kalen. Jesus Christ, sorry. This is embarrassing on so many levels. There you go. Sorry, I didn't go to Art Center, so I can't draw for shit. Um, I can't like draw, draw this kind of stuff. Anyways, um, simple shape. So that's what we're trying to do here is refine that. So a good example of this, and I'll just bring it up right now. Um, give me a second on my other screen. I post this on my Instagram, not my Instagram, but my Twitter earlier today. So I'll actually, I'll actually just bring it up right now. Um, just so we can kind of like, ref like talk about that some more is this idea, right? And so all we're doing, God dang it. I did not want to open that there. Okay. So the same thing, right? We're establishing a shape. We're establishing the perspective. We're establishing the space, right? Establishing your space is like super important. If you don't know your space of what you're creating, then like you're already fucked. And like whenever I have students that have a problem, they're like, Kaylin, my drawing, my environment sucks. And I'm like, okay, where's your grid? Like, what's the space that we're looking at? Like, what's the camera that we're using? Is it a long lens? Is it a short lens, right? And they're like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, then I want to slap you because like you're already at a losing battle. Like you're coming onto the soccer field. You're not wearing cleats or shin guards, nor do you know who you're playing against, right? You're going to get fucked. So you do that right there, establish the space. Then you just, you just create basic shapes. So these are all crappy shapes, right? They're just literally boxes, right? They're boxes with some other, you know, smaller boxes on it. And they're not even in that, even in great perspective, but you can see kind of how I'm kind of drawing through and breaking it down. Once I do that, I just refine the shape. So it's very, very easy to see how we kind of went from there to there. And all I did was use simple shapes to create a rhythmic composition. So that little blue arrow there this is showing that I want the I want the the kind of visual to kind of go from left to right, and then from there, right, we're just filling that with value. So, that's like the basics of composition or basics of just painting an environment. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Then you can get to something where you're painting something like this, and it's the same exact idea, right? Like all that stuff. You can already see the simple shapes that are happening there. It's just kind of getting to this part first. And so a lot of people will kind of get to like stage four in the beginning and they'll just go straight stage four. I'm not one of those people. I'm not amazing. I'm not Anthony Jones. Like I can't paint like in this way, like in the very beginning. Um, I just can't balance that. And that's what a lot of people have trouble with in the beginning is they're trying to balance like four different freaking things at once. And as you're a beginner, like you're going to fuck that up just because like your brain can't, your brain can't compute all that at once. So if you take a step back and you do one thing at a time, you'll have a better chance of like doing it. And after a while you'll skip it. So normally like, I don't really need to do like step one and two cause I've done it enough time. I'll go to three and four right away. You get what I'm saying? So like, and then eventually I can get to this where I can just go to, I can go to stage four and just paint and paint my, and paint my way in. So um, defining the space is, is essentially perspective, right? You want to look at, you can already kind of see the actual visual space, right? There's a depth to it. There's something in the foregrounds. There's, this is like kind of the foreground lines, the background lines. You can already feel the sense of space. And so if you, if you define the space before you draw it, 
then you're fine. Most people, when they're drawing, is what they do, right? They go into like a file and they're just like, all right, um, we're just gonna start painting something and they just start painting shit, right? Like they're just doing that, no sense of space, they're just going and then an hour goes by and they're like, why does my stuff look like ass, right? And you're like, well, no wonder because you didn't really define anything. You didn't, you didn't give yourself any rules, any like a sense of space, like you're just kind of just painting, right? And so some people have that mileage where they can do it, but like this is not me in particular. Um, so for a lot of people when they're doing environments, like you want to try to do these three steps first. It's tedious, but it will usually work out in the long run. Um, in terms of being able to start off simple with simple shapes and then build in that complexity, like as you go, um, it's really, really, it's really, really hard to do this. Like most people, because when you watch people paint online and shit, like they just do step four and they're like, I'm tight. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. But as a teacher, I found out that by doing that, as I taught over the years, by just doing stage four, they're just like, I don't understand, right? Because there's so many things that are in my head. So even though in my head, I'm balancing all these three things, I can't necessarily like convey it to you or tell you about it because my brain is working a million miles a minute. You know what I mean? So I have to kind of literally like, as I teach it, I have to literally stop and say, okay, like we're in stage one, establish your stuff. So of course, when someone comes to me at stage four, right? And they're like, Kalen, my drawing sucks. And I'm like, okay, let's take a step back to stage three. What is your simple shapes? And they go, well, I don't know. And I go, okay, we'll do that. And they go, well, okay, my, my, my refined shapes aren't that great. And I go, all right, let's go, let's go step back. Simple shapes right here. What are your simple shapes for the composition? Do you have it? If they don't have it, then they're like, oh no. Or they go, Kalen, my simple shapes are off. And I go, all right, let's take a step back. Let's go to perspective. Where's your space? Where are we, right? And so this makes it a lot easier for me to teach somebody because if they give me all four of these steps, I can evaluate what they're doing. And I can say, hey, you fucked up on stage three. You need to go back there and fix it. And now they have it on a layer. They have it all separated. They can fix it. Versus if, and raise your hand if you're like one of me, right? Like you paint on like one layer and then like you try to you try to change it up. And the next thing you know, you're just like having to go back and forth. And next thing you know, you're just like, you know what, you know what I'm saying? Like you're, you're, you're painting over and painting over and you're noodling, you're noodling and you waste hours, right? It's like my worst, that's like my worst pet peeve is wasting time. Because you know, I got a wife, I got kids, I got Apex to play, I got a lot of shit to do, right? So I need to be efficient, especially people that work in the industry, like your director is always gonna give you changes no matter what. Like even if it's like really dope, they're gonna tell you like, hey, move this cloud five inches to the right. And if you paint on one layer, you're gonna be like, F my freaking life, right? So you don't wanna do that. So I'm sorry, I'm reading right here. Uh, what's up, Tiki Face? Um, came from Twitter wondering, are you gonna save the vid from UK? What's up in the UK? Uh, yeah, it should be saved, but it'll only be saved for like two weeks though. Um, had to bread. Uh, yeah, uh, good night, bro. Uh, wish you, I think you mentioned the video will be up for a week afterwards. Uh, sorry if you explained this earlier, but the white and blue marks um, just results of creating a perspective map? Yes. Uh, the white and blue marks right here are just me creating the uh, the station point and the vanishing points. I just cropped it, so um, that's my fault. So don't don't look into that part. Um, Tiki Face, yeah, I wish I knew this stuff five years ago. Uh, yeah, I wish I, I wish I knew it 10 years ago as well. Um, but you know, you, you live and you learn. So I'm just trying to kind of put you on some game in terms of like shit that's like helped me out. And I'm like way faster now when I paint that I can I can do things like a lot faster than normal because of the fact that I'm able to kind of compartmentalize stuff. And I wish I could show you like, um, <clears throat> like I'll show you actually, uh, well, I mean, actually no, I, I gotta ask, I gotta ask Josh if I can show that, 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 that um, PSD. So if you guys don't know, I worked on Kenna Bridge of Spirits. <clears throat> if you guys haven't seen that, um, I'll ask Josh if I can break down the PSD if I can. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to because it's on stream, but I'll show you like why layers are super useful. Um, but check that out if you haven't, by the way, this is like the new game. 
uh, that I've been working on, uh, that I was working on, and it's awesome. Like all kinds of like cool stuff, cute little little things that help you move stuff around. And so I help with some of the environment designs. And so um, layers actually made it easier. So that way, uh, let's see here. Oh, that's a nice painting. Sorry, I'm I'm like I'm like sidetracked here. I'm looking at paintings on ArtStation like a noob, and I'm like focus, Cameron. <clears throat> so yeah, so when I did these two paintings, it was really easy to go from this painting right here to this painting right here because I had layers. You know what I mean? So like, um, I did this painting first, and then they were like, "Yo, Kalen, what if like, um, like in the in the game, it's probably gonna be like a storm. We want to see what it looks like as a storm too." And this actually took like was actually was really quick to do this because it was all on like different layers, you know what I mean? So I was able to kind of do both, like boom, no problem. So that's why like layers and stuff like that is super, super useful. So that's why um, you want to be able to kind of be organizing your thoughts, yeah. So so right now um, as we're doing this, <clears throat> I am living in this space right here, right? Like, I'm like, how do I, does that look cool to me? And if it does, then we, we Gucci baby, right? Like we're in a good spot. So that's how I know like, okay, cool. Like I can begin to kind of maybe start rendering it. But even then, like I have like, P not, I don't know if I have PTSD about rendering, but I don't render until like, I'm really confident in this thing right here. And so like, I'll literally like take a step back and like, I'll sit here with like my head back and I'm just like tilting it and I'm looking at it. I'll even like flip it a couple of times just to kind of be like, you know, is that the best? And it's like not too bad now that I'm looking at it. It's very like this shape, I don't actually like it. So now I have to either kind of fix it from that side or, you know, or, you know, just kind of just ignore that problem. <laughs> just ignore it as a whole and just leave it. But it's always good to actually kind of, I do actually like how this shape still works, um, but this shape kind of feels a little bit off um, in general. So I think it's like this angle needs to be fixed. And so, yeah, now I have the chance to do that. So let's actually do that right now. <clears throat> so I can go in there and this is why you don't render, right? Because until I have that confidence that it's like good, I'm not gonna mess with it. Because how many of you guys have done it like, I think why I don't like it is, okay, I think that's why I don't like it. I don't like how, close it is so now it's not too bad because now it, it creates more space that I feel like I didn't have before and now I feel like it's a little bit nicer and I don't like all this nonsense that kind of overlaps a little bit too much and this guy I think needs to kind of go across That. and um, <clears throat> we're good now I'll take a look at this guy I think this needs to be I feel like this needs to be higher the perspective so I'm actually gonna raise it up a little bit so that way it feels like yeah I want that to be a little bit higher because I want this to be above the horizon line so yeah Cool. Um, so I will have to make some changes based on that. Um, and we'll see where that goes. Um, Water saying, I like how the negative shapes kind of point towards the focal point. Um, what is the point of the gray drawing up left? Um, the point of that is so that I can see what it looks like in black and white. So uh, as I paint it, right, as I make a shape, uh, I can see what it looks like as a graphic thumbnail. So 
I'm, I can paint this in like super high detail, right? I can go in here and I can make shapes like that. And I can see how that, if you look right here, as I begin to kind of make a shape, it will actually show it in black and white up top of there. So now I have my own black and white thumbnail and I can see whether or not I think it's working or not from a graphical standpoint, yeah? Because if the painting is good, in theory, it should be able to kind of look good from multiple, from like really far away. Like I should be able to kind of look at it there and it should be very, very easily readable if I'm looking at it from that direction. So from having that as a separate window, I can solve two birds with one stone. That's what I'm trying to do right now is solve said bird or said stone right now so I don't have to worry about it. So I think now I'm kind of like happy and we'll, we'll leave it as is. And so I'm going to try to stream every Tuesday at this time, but I do get busy with work. So I apologize if I don't, but like if you check my Twitter, like I'll usually announce that I'm gonna be streaming and it's usually on Tuesdays. But like if I'm here, if it's like Tuesday and it's like 8.15 and I'm not here, I haven't said anything, chances are, you know, I'm kind of busy with like life stuff. So um, it's been kind of a crazy, crazy week work-wise. And I like that shape, but I'm like, is it small enough? I don't think it was small enough. Yeah, there you go. Slowly but surely. So all these angles now, like I'm really trying to kind of paint with intention here in terms of really like making sure that every angle is really kind of helping the composition and I really need to make sure that that's like on point right that's kind of like my main thing is like is the composition sound and if it's not then obviously we have some problems and I don't like the angle of that So there you go. Um, but I do like the angle of, I feel like that just needs to be simplified. There you go. See? And cool. All right, cool. So now I can go in here now and like, so for me right now, what I'd want to do is on this guy, I'm going to draw some contour lines. And contour lines can really, really help out in terms of really just figuring out the lay of the land. So like I'm trying to kind of, this, this may not make any sense by the way, but it makes sense to me to do this. Is this the right layer? Okay, it is, cool. And so this is really helpful to me because as I draw that, I can now kind of place things like in the proper perspective. Does that make sense? I don't know. I feel like I'm talking out of my ass right now at this point. But like, I feel like now it's a little bit easier to kind of add in shapes that will fit with the contour of the land, the lay of the land. So, oops. so I want this like graphically to have like a lot of cool stuff in here. Otherwise I'm kind of like, what's the point? That's what I'm doing. And so we definitely want like negative space. We want all that kind of stuff. 
going back to like my graphical brush. So, and eventually what's gonna happen too is like all these little, these little shapes and stuff like that are gonna be like nice and well rendered. So you see all that, like that's kind of cool. And then I might even make a new one here. And this new one will be maybe a tad bit lighter. So that way, you see all that, like it helps with the perspective a little bit more. So this is where knowing like the contour of your shapes uh, is like really, 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 really important there. So, because now at this point, I can really zoom in now if I really want to, right? I can go in here and I can really put in some of these negative shapes in here. Like a lot of these little pieces here that like no one's ever gonna see. Let me just use like a regular brush. Boom, there you go. So all these shapes that are like super, super graphic um, I can now put those in here and all of this like overlapping and stuff like that will just help, will just help it kind of like read a little bit better. So these are all little shapes that are kind of following the contour that's going to create like all of this like depth in there that we wouldn't normally get. And so I really want to make sure that all of these shapes are just naturally cool looking and like have and what should be happening too is it should be kind of like creating like that negative space <clears throat> you know what i mean and so when it comes to like a graphical shape uh i like to just use like a round brush like something that's round or whatever is like cool like you don't really need anything else um Something that's just hard, that's like, that's really, really sharp. You're not gonna have any crazy pixels kind of left over and stuff. Um, we just want something that's just like easily, nothing with texture, by the way. So like the hard round brush is like all you really need, to be honest. Um, that's where I design a lot of my stuff. And then after you do that, then you can go in there and say, hey, let's actually use like, um, you know, a texture brush and work on some of the edges and things like that. So that's kind of where I am right now is I can get all of that in there. And so you can do like mini compositions too. So like now let's say that I like all that, right? There's all kinds of stuff in there. I don't actually like it though. Like there's actually a lot of shit I don't like about it. It's kind of ugly. Um, So that's my own fault for like kind of zooming in there too too fast, too soon. So something like that actually might work. I need to simplify it. I think there's just too much going on to be honest. So like the negative, the uh, floating kind of negative space is like really, really hard to figure out to be honest. So, but it's like not bad though. Like I like it, but I definitely need to like figure out yeah I think this is too high I think that's what it was I need to be like a little bit softer or a little bit like less less vertical yeah I think that's cool and then Yeah, there you go. So yeah, that, that this part's kind of hard because it's like super, super like detail-y kind of stuff. So it's not too bad. Um, but there does need to come a time where I do need to kind of like play in this world right here where now we have like floating detail, I guess. And like, that's like the really, really hard part because floating detail is really, really hard to make it look like very cool graphically. Um, and this is where like I'm like a stickler for it is like every shape like has to just be cool and has to flow and if it doesn't then like there's no point in like rendering so I spent a lot of time there um let's see uh so yeah 
So I'm right there. So what, what I do next sometimes too, if I needed my help right here, is I'll make a smaller um, window like this. And I'll just make it like, I don't know, just gray or something. Oops. And so this is like my mini composition. So in so within this guy, this has to be like a good composition. You know what I mean? So like, is it? I don't know, to be honest. Like, so that has to have like its own composition that's like, you know, easily readable and makes sense. And so already I'm kind of seeing some things where I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe this guy needs to be a little bit more over. So that way um, it kind of leads their eye this direction first. Or maybe uh, instead like that angle needs to be a little bit higher. Or instead maybe this guy needs to have some things happen to it. So there's all kinds of stuff kind of happening here that now I got to like figure this part out, right? So, uh, not Joe, what's going on, man? Thank you, man, I appreciate it. So maybe right now, this angle right here was what I was missing, you know what I mean? Like that angle right there. So now that shape right there is looking like real nice to me. So I just solved a problem that I didn't know that I had. So like if I were to use the blue shape right here, now that negative shape is like kind of is like low key sexy, you know what I mean? Like this right here, that's money. Boom, right? So to paint that would have been a bitch. Like that would have been super super hard to paint that shape out. So, like that's where I like these little negative shapes right here are all like money to me at least, where I think it looks visually pleasing, but this is all subjective right now. You know what I mean? Like not everyone's gonna be about that, but at least like I am I'm have a visual or I'm consciously aware of it and I can kind of make a decision based off of it. You know what I'm saying? Like right there, that's a good shape. I like that. I like this shape right here. This shape looks really nice to me visually. This negative space, that's that's juicy, right? That's some juicy stuff right there. I like that. So now I probably need to kind of further it. I probably need to make like one more juicy shape that kind of goes upward. And on top of that, the reason why I like it is because it's it's balance counterbalancing. That shape is going that direction. That shape is going that direction. This shape can go this direction now, and it's leading our eye right through back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So when I like that, you know, I turn that shit off, I look at it and I go, okay, cool. Well, now I gotta just get this part kind of figured out here. And we good. So, I like it. And then, um, So again, all this before I even render anything, right? I haven't touched anything. And that's really, really important that I, uh, I don't if I can help it. Because I don't want to, I don't want to waste time, right? That's my biggest thing, right? Time wasting is like, it kills my soul if I'm wasting time. And so when I fuck up at work and stuff like that, I'm like, damn, how can I be more efficient, um, you know, with my stuff? Uh, I like that shape actually kind of bleeding my eye there, which means that this guy needs to kind of just become more here. And then, whoops. So we'll probably go for another eight minutes and then, um, I'll, uh, I'll post what I have thus far. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll go, maybe we'll kind of like, you know, render this out possibly. I will make a, um, if anyone's interested, like I'm really, I've been thinking about making a gumroad about this cause I don't really talk about it that much, about this idea of kind of compounding shapes. 
um, a little bit more kind of like an instructional idea of like how I think about it. And I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing soon. Um, but we'll see. Uh, shit, I fucked that up. Man. Okay, let me read some comments right now. Uh, so when you're adding contour uh, guides, do they follow the perspective lines? I've always had a hard time placing organic shapes. Yes, um, they follow the perspective guidelines. So um, they're kind of they're this one's this one's above the perspective. This one's above the horizon line, so it doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, if anything, that stuff you can get away with. It's when we, it's when we get closer to the foreground, middle ground, where this stuff's going to be really really important. Meaning that like right here in particular, let's just say that I. Um, I'll make this like super light here. These strokes are gonna be super helpful here in particular. So now if I want to take this guy and paint a lighter value, you see these strokes now? They're kind of following the, the perspective. That's gonna be really, really important for me um, to kind of sell that. So in the foreground, midground, that stuff can be, is like pretty important and it's imperative that you kind of use your perspective grid as follows. Um, but in the background, you can kind of get away with like it not being that effective. You know what I mean? So um, I'm only really I'm saving that for when I really need it, like in this whole little area right here. Um, everything else, uh, not as important. Um, but it's good to have though. Like in general, it's good to just have that confidence that you can do it if you needed to. Okay, here we go. Ooh, a little, little extra there. Okay, I fuck with that. Let's see here. So here's the thing, like you don't wanna be married to your perspective um, or married to your composition. So like things, allow things to change, you know what I mean? Like allow, allow the thing to, allow your painting to evolve, you know what I mean? So those, this is my perspective. I should be confident that I can change it or break from it if I think it's gonna help me overall. You know what I mean? So don't be married to kind of everything that you do. So like, I'm not necessarily married to like this, this image in per se, but I'm pretty close <laughs> if I had to guess. So you definitely just wanna have a game plan or at least make conscious decisions about it that you're like hey i thought of this and i weighed the pros and cons and i didn't end up liking it and that's okay too what the f where is this from oh it's from that shit okay so i like what's going on here but i probably need more shapes so Okay, so. Cool, all right, so that's it. Um, Sorry, I got real quiet. I don't know why. That's my bad. Uh, let's see here. Uh, looking sweet. Uh, okay. Uh, how did you get the navigator window to be grayscale or dot gain while your main window is in color? Um, people that are new, uh, I explained it in the video earlier if you want to scroll back. But um, all you have to do is just go to your uh, window, arrange. Go down to new window right there. It will create a new window um, right here. And then all you have to do is just switch it uh, to whatever thing you want it to be. So right now, this one's in color, but if I wanted it to be, um, you know, working gain dot 20%, then I would just go to proof colors. I'll do view, proof setup, and then change it right there. So right now, this one is in black and white, but if I want to go back to color, uh, you know, there you go. Um, but you can you can just kind of watch that like watch it earlier because I kind of explain it more, a little bit more in depth, so you can kind of get it. 
Um, so Notch is saying, do you usually go with rule of thirds composition or do you ever experiment with breaking up or do something asymmetric? Uh, yeah, usually things are kind of rule of thirds. Rule of thirds is always like a strong, like a strong kind of like go-to, like you can't really go wrong with it for the most part. Um, so right now this is on the thirds for the most part, like the focal point, so that's kind of nice. And then obviously I want to find ways to kind of go past that. So if this is kind of like where we're lined up right here, which is like right there. I want to find ways to kind of, um, uh, it's, oh, it's all a good reason, don't worry about it. Uh, so right now it's kind of going across this direction. So now it's crossing like this main point right here. So I want to see where I can cross it again. So I probably need to put something like right here, like a shape right there, so it goes across. So right now, if you kind of look at it, if this is the line, I guess this is probably the line. Notice that I'm going visually like across and back and forth and back and forth. Um, that's always good if you can kind of kind of teeter that line a little bit to kind of make the eye move a little bit. So right now, everything is kind of going to like this area right here where it starts and it's all kind of bouncing around a little bit. Not to mention that we have all kinds of like nice rhythmic rhythmic lines that are kind of leading us throughout the piece. So there's all kinds of stuff happening there and that's, that's what my mind is kind of doing. And so you want to kind of solve that early on, which is why everything that I'm doing is kind of in that space right now of just moving stuff uh, in that way. And so keep that in mind, my neighbor. Uh, let's see. No, oh, I think we're good. Cool. Okay, it's 9.30. Uh, I almost to go till 9, but this kind of escalated a little bit. But I'm wondering if I should go. I mean, I guess I can go for a little bit longer. But, um, yeah. Is this stuff helping? Or, like, what do you guys want to see more? They're going to stream, right? There's no point in me streaming unless it, like, legit helps you. I don't know why. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? When well, this helps you, um, yeah, share it with your homies. But let me at least get like, okay, yeah. So, render. So with rendering, um, hmm, what part can I render? So I'll, I'll run to the back, right? <clears throat> so the first thing that we do, at least for me, is once I get this part figured out, then I can break up the, the angle. It's a very, very angle. And so uh, what I like to do after this is I like to play with the edges and like the overall angle. So I can go in here. <clears throat> and so you can see this kind of brush, a little bit softer, a lot of things happening in here. And you can see me begin to kind of like dirty it up and make it kind of like irregular. So that's kind of like the first, that first kind of phase of like rendering where all these little bits and pieces are beginning to kind of like be a little bit more visually interesting. So before, right, it was all super like, you know, angular, whatever. Now I can go in here, I can draw through the form, I can add more stuff. I can just make it imperfect, right? We're trying to find some of those like imperfect irregularities in the piece and we'll erase as such as well. So meaning like as I go, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of like mess it up a little bit. So that's the goal. <clears throat> and so if I'm gonna paint like a building or something inside of it, you know, I could do that too. Um, I'm going to set that for next week, though, because that's kind of like a whole other, like, can of worms. That's like, uh, I would need, like, a whole segment to talk about how I would uh, paint said building. So, um, but it's a good idea. We can definitely talk about that as well. So, uh, all right, so let's say that I'm happy with this. Let's say that, like, I like the shape. It's cool, you know. All the little details here that I'm adding. It's cool, right? I mess with it, I'm cool with it. Alright, so obviously like that that um 
that white stuff right there right here could obviously kind of be snow or something so let's add something in there so now um it's important to get the shape down like right here right as we're kind of rendering it out the shape is going to be important if the shape of the silhouette isn't cool then like it doesn't matter what you put in the shape it's like it's not going to matter you know what i mean like it's not going to it really won't matter what you um, what texture brushes you put in here per se so the first thing i want to do is i probably want to establish like um dark and light shadows that kind of stuff so that's probably what i'm going to do right now so uh let's say that this, this by the way this this color isn't like amazing to me by the way i'm not gonna like don't don't worry about the color per se um just worry about like just the overall shape language in terms of the rendering so because normally i would have probably did a couple of color ideas first before i got into this um so yeah keep that in mind so anyways, uh, what I want to do here is I want to match it more to the background. So I can just drag like that, find that halfway point, just so, I, just so it's a little bit lighter, you know? And the first thing I would do is I'd make a layer, I would link it to it, and I want to establish like the, um, the shadow shapes, right? So I can go in there and I don't really know like where the shadow shapes are going to be, but if I if I had this stuff figured out earlier on, then it's actually like way easier. So you can kind of see me like figure this out now. Nothing too crazy. All right. So you can see how the shadow of this is now beginning to kind of add to kind of create form, um, that kind of stuff. So that's kind of where, uh, you know. I want where I want to put it. Cool. So that's kind of how I like render it. And so I'm not a hundred percent like done yet, but So you see that, like, not saying this is like amazing and I'm like gonna render with this, but that's kind of like how I kind of built stuff up. So now let's say I'm happy with that. I can then begin to kind of mess with the, the edges a little bit more. So maybe what I'll do is, you know, I might paint at a lower opacity just so I can kind of soften up some of those edges a little bit, that kind of stuff. You can see how that kind of works. So there you go, right? A little bit more form. Um, within that form though, I would begin to kind of paint in a cooler shadow, something cold, probably like in there. And if I link that, I can kind of just go across the whole thing. So you can kind of see how that kind of flows a little bit nicer. Um, if I have certain kind of like um, shape tools, I can begin to kind of throw that in there and stuff. Uh, but normally I keep this pretty simple, pretty easy to handle. Uh, and I'll kind of paint like other like lighter values in here. Um, just so like, like that, you know, and it may not be to that extent, but and then we'll kind of just mess with that as well. So there you go. You can kind of see how we're kind of painting that out, which is nice. And then obviously on my other one, what I'll do is I'll paint probably like a lighter value on this and maybe like a warmer value. And depending on like how much I want to go with it, you know, I'll kind of just erase here. And you can kind of see me kind of putting in, Can you, you can kind of see how the form's kind of slowly building up here uh, as I'm kind of painting. And that's kind of the way that I like to go about it. All right. See that? Nice. 
and a lot of things that I'll do too is like uh, I'll I'll try to um, mix it up with like a uh, color dynamics. So color dynamics is really really good just because. Uh, you can get more multiple colors. I usually do like three percent, three to four, five percent. Like that in there. See that? And then now, if I turn off apply per tip, what happens is that every time I make a stroke, it's a new color, and I can kind of erase, do all that kind of stuff in there. And then finally, uh, the last thing would be like the snow, right? So now, if I want to. Let's say I like this uh, the snow color here. I'll hide this actually, just so we can. Um... All right, I can now. Whoops. Well, I guess maybe I will turn the color dynamics off. Is uh. All right, you can kind of see how. that kind of blends into it and then maybe I don't know maybe like as we're kind of pushing it that could be some of the snow but obviously that snow is in like um, the snow is in uh, the shadow so I have to kind of change that up a little bit and so the snow has to kind of like fit the um, has to kind of fit the uh, the contour of the environment so that means that I have to go in there and make that like a a different color right you see that so on that side it will be that color so then I will just paint that but maybe there's a point in there where as it comes across maybe it's a lighter color uh, maybe it's like this lighter color or something, you know? So now we get to play with this idea of like light of, you know, warm versus cool light on there as well. So uh, hopefully you can now see uh, how I would spend. And this part's kind of a little bit, a little bit easier to kind of handle just because of the fact that like everything else is kind of figured out. But um, that's, that's exactly how I approach it, like almost every time. Um, so that way, if I need to change something, it's actually really, really easy to do. I don't have to worry about like messing around with something too much, especially coming from like, you know, if my boss like is like, hey, make that snow more of like a bluer color or more of like a warmer color, um, any kind of changes like that, we're good to go. So. And there we go. All right, it's not too bad, right? I don't think it looks. I don't think it looks half bad. It doesn't look amazing, but it doesn't look half bad in the thumbnail. So I guess we'll we'll kind of call it like a win, a win-win. And so I'm painting in a very kind of additive manner, where I'll paint a lot and I'll kind of sculpt out like the shape a little bit more. And so if you look at here, right, like it's it's reading like like I like I want it to read. So then I call that like you know definitely a win so that is uh, that is kind of how I render in a nutshell um, this goes for literally anything like you know uh, like a building or a tree whatever uh, this this kind of method of painting of kind of just separating things um, usually works pretty well for me um, but it's always important to kind of explore different ways of painting, because everyone paints differently. Everyone thinks about things differently. So um, my job as an instructor is to kind of show you different ways. And then your job is to kind of try those ways out and figure out what you like about it, what you don't like about it. Or just kind of take some things that you like about it and maybe kind of make it your own, you know? So yeah, so, but normally I wouldn't, I wouldn't even get to this phase until the shapes were like, were pretty like well, well figured out. And at the end of the day, if I don't like it, right, I'm back to where I was, right? Nothing, no harm, no foul. So, but the shadows though, like if you get the shadows right, like shadows make everything like do well. And of course, then you can kind of drag upward a little bit 
and get some of that that atmosphere in there oh yeah that's what i'm talking about slight work um <clears throat> Um, yeah, I usually have photos around me, like, of things I've taken pictures of. Um, usually if I'm working for a client, they'll have already given me photos. Um, they'll give, they'll have given me, like, some references of what they want it to be. So, you know, I follow a lot of stuff on Instagram, that kind of shit, like, whatever I'm into. Um, but also watching a lot of movies, I'm doing sketches in your sketchbook, so... Like for instance, um, I don't know. Am I doing this the right way? Oh, these are ugly. These are terrible. Nice. Um, you can't really see it, but there's all kinds of like sketches there of like things that I'll draw that are like super ugly, but they help out, you know? So that's kind of like the equivalent of like the marker phase. And so <clears throat> I'm always in that kind of phase uh, when I'm drawing. So for instance, uh, this is funny. <clears throat> this piece right here, like it's like a small little drawing. I don't know if you can kind of see it there, but that drawing actually led to um, a drawing on the Twitter that was this guy. And let me go to my homepage here. Come on. Go to your homepage. Boom. Sorry, I'm on Twitter here. Uh, it led to this drawing right here. So that drawing was from a sketch that, like, I sketched it out a couple times first. And then, like, I really thought about it. And then I was like, okay, now I'll. I'll paint it out and now I have like a better idea. And I have no clue what this file is, but it's a shitload of layers, man. A lot of layers. But worked out, they liked it. Never got made, but you know, it's fun while it lasted. Alright. Cool. Well I think um, do I use the Kyle brushes? Um, you mean Kyle T. Webster? Is that what you're talking about? That guy? Uh, I use my own brushes? Like, actually not really. Like, yeah. No, I don't use those. Um, I use the preset of John Park. So I use his tool preset, which is right there whenever I want to use like more painterly stuff. <clears throat> but for the most part, like honestly, when I'm painting, it's literally these like three brushes that I use. Like I don't really use much else. Um, it's this one right here, which I was like, what brush is that, right? Well, you gotta ask, you know? You, you know, I use this brush a lot. This is like everything. I use this to like block in and I use this for like hard and soft edges. So it's like good for, it's like good for like life drawing stuff if you wanna like, right? Automatic egg. So it's good for that kind of stuff. And then the last brush, like I use this one for more painterly stuff. This one's like super painterly. And then like maybe this one for like softening. And then <clears throat> this one's for like buildings. You can make a building like really, really easy. Oh shit, building time, sci-fi building time. And then all you gotta do is like put some values in there. Now you got sci-fi buildings. Or if you're a lazy person like me, uh, then you have actual like things for this. So I actually have a, where the hell is it? If I was a lazy person, where would I be? Right there. Then yeah, you just do that. 
So normally I just put that in there and then bam, cities. And I don't have to worry about it um, because I'm a terrible person and I admit it. And that's where I'm able to create a lot of shapes because I'm awful. So yeah, uh, that's these are the brushes that I use the most. I don't really use many other things. Um, all the other brushes are very kind of like one-off things, meaning that like I only use them unless like I really, 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 really need to use them. They're like I use them for like in a very, very specific situation. But the rest of them to get like all the most important stuff done, I just use like these like five, and that's it. And when I and when I say by five, it's like literally like like this like these two get like all the work done. And then like the three, four, and five are like rendering brushes, like those are the ones that render. So yeah, cool. Now, if you are interested in inset brushes, uh, I'll just link you right now. So that way you don't have to necessarily bother me about it. Um, if this ever opens up <clears throat> brushes, so. Uh, Kaylin brushes, cool. Let me save this out real quick. Let me save my brushes. And we'll go from there. So I have John Parks, but I don't usually use these. Cool. Um, let's see, how do I do this? <clears throat> um, export brushes, cool. Kaylin brushes, cool. There we go. And then I will create a Dropbox link. Copy. Do it one more time. Cool. Bam. Oh, shit. I messed it up. There you go. For oh, bam. There's Dropbox link. There you go. <clears throat> so you're all good to go, bro. Um yeah all right guys uh it's time for me to go hang out with the wifey we're gonna watch a tv show i think together and cool man thank y'all for for coming i appreciate it if you enjoyed this share the video with your friends i'm gonna try to be here next week um if you have stuff just follow me on twitter uh or on insta whichever one you want to do uh, up to you. That's where I be kind of posting most of my stuff. Uh, you can just follow me at K04SK or Kalen Chalk, my name. Y'all should be able to find me. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to uh, stream next week. I'm gonna try to do that. If y'all hold me to it, if y'all bug me enough and make me feel bad for not showing up, then I will do it more often. So I appreciate it. So thank y'all for coming out. I appreciate it, and um, I'm gonna see you when I see y'all. Okay. Uh, yeah, take care. If you have any questions, email me, all that kind of stuff. I'll talk to you guys then. All right, take care, guys. And as always, uh, peace out, everyone. Lace. Thanks for watching. <laughs>